Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Listen, we're gonna hop right in. I got a special one for you today. So listen, growing up as a kid, one of my favorite, actually my all time favorite dessert, and I know this sounds crazy because I'm a chef, but is banana pudding, right? Now, to be more specific, Southern style vanilla wafer bananas chopped up pudding, okay? Now, here's the thing. I am have elevated my grandmother's version, but I gotta admit, that is one of my most profound childhood memories is my grandmother making this vanilla wafer banana pudding this classic southern dessert and i'm telling you it was a game changer for me i always have loved it it reminds me of my childhood and i'm going to show you my version today so it's so easy to make let me tell you something you do not want to miss this video so quick, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on those post notifications. Make sure you like the video because I'm gonna drop some value bombs. Now, I also wanna mention, I'm gonna change the structure of my YouTube a little bit. I'm gonna post one video a week. I've got some things coming up in the works that you're gonna be really appreciative of, but I have been working on something behind the scenes that I will let you know in future videos. So. Without further ado, banana pudding. It is my favorite dessert. Yes, I know, there are three million desserts out there. You know, <laughs> chocolate, ice cream, this, that, but I gotta admit, the banana pudding is my favorite. And the reason why I love it, it's so easy to make. I'm gonna show you how to make it today. I'm gonna put my little twist on it, but guaranteed you can make this at your house. So let's go. We're gonna start by making our vanilla custard. All right, so basically, you can take this guy right here and throw him in the trash, okay? We're gonna make our own. So I'm using an induction burner, but you don't have to. Um, but basically we're gonna make a vanilla pudding. So it starts with 840 grams of milk. All right, and now what I like to do is I like to start with just a little bit, okay? Mix, mix the cornstarch in to that, okay? All, the recipe will be all down below, okay? And that way you don't get any lumps, okay? Then you add the rest of your milk. Oh yeah. From there, we're gonna add 50 grams of sugar. Now I have Tahitian vanilla bean here, so I'm only using half, but this would be the equivalent of one vanilla bean. So I'm gonna add the pod, and this has been scraped. And what you wanna do is you wanna bring this up slowly, slowly. Now. Some people add their eggs in here, I do not because you have a chance of making scrambled eggs. So what I like to do is I like to make the pudding first and then add, temper in the eggs. Okay, so right here I have four egg yolks and one whole egg. And also you're gonna have some butter ready to finish. Okay, so we're slowly warming up our milk mixture. So far in here, what we have is 50 grams of sugar, 30 grams of cornstarch, okay? And 840 grams of milk. All, the recipe will be down below, okay? But it's very important, don't leave this. Make sure that when you're making a custard or anything that could have the potential of burning on the bottom, you always watch it, okay? So once this starts to get a little hot, then I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. Now listen, we don't want it to taste salty, okay? You just want a pinch of salt to make it a touch savory, okay? That's the, that's the goal. Anytime you add salt to desserts, it's very minuscule, very small. That way you can balance out the sweetness. I think that's a, I think that's a thing about being between a savory chef and a pastry chef. If a savory chef makes a dessert, we're gonna figure out how to put salt in there. <laughs> I think that's really, um, you know, I think that's something that's really important to take in consideration, right? I, I, I firmly believe I don't like desserts too sweet. I want to taste whatever flavor that is being used, especially if it's a fruit-based dessert. I think that's so important. And see, the thing is, is the reason why I don't add the eggs right now to the pudding mixture is because in order to activate cornstarch, you need to bring it up to a full boil, okay? And if you have the eggs in there, I mean, there's just such a high risk for making scrambled eggs unless you're constantly stirring it. And I feel like you really just want a super velvety texture. So. The idea of tempering the egg yolks in, folding them in and just getting them lightly cooked is ideal for me so you don't get a curdled egg. Okay, so once we're safely at a boil, basically we are just gonna keep stirring. And then what I like to do, especially because this is boiling now, just take a little bit of the mixture and pour it in with the eggs. And then what we're doing is called tempering. Now I think this is very important. So I've turned the heat down, okay? 
I've turned the heat down on the mixture and it's not burning on the bottom. But basically all we're trying to do is bring the eggs up to temp. So this is a really easy way to do that. And then all we're gonna do from here is once I can feel these eggs steaming, we're gonna add it straight in. And then take it off of the heat or turn it off and we're gonna incorporate that while we continue to whisk. All right, now I know this is kind of an extra step, but I really do believe it yields a better product. You know, right now as it's steaming, the eggs are also thickening it up a little bit more and it's gonna give it a really nice mouthfeel. Again, like I said in the beginning, if you add the eggs right to it and you bring the eggs up to a boil, you risk, you highly risk a chance of scrambling them and then your custard will kind of taste, or your pudding I should say, will taste eggy. And we, we don't really want that. We want the eggs to be cooked, but we really want that, that velvety feel of what the egg yolk is supposed to do. You know, like when you have a juicy egg yolk on a sandwich, it's like there's nothing better. All right, now I know this might look a little bit liquidy, but trust me, as it cools down, it will thicken up. So from here, all we have left to do is we're gonna add 20 grams of softened butter, or you can add cold butter, it's totally fine. Mine has been sitting out room temp, so. So we add the 20 grams of butter and then it's off the heat. And what we're gonna do is we are ever so gently just gonna keep stirring this to incorporate it in. Now you have two options. You can leave this just like this. If this is for you at your house, you know, you're more than welcome to just leave it like this. But for me, because I'm a chef, I like to pass it through a chinois. That way there's no curdles and everything is nice and smooth. If you do not have a chinois, highly suggest this. Uh, not expensive on off Amazon and uh, I think it's totally worth it. You can get away with a small one, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do right now. So basically what we do is we take this, pour this in. Beautiful, and I'll scrape all that out in a minute. And then you really wanna push the vanilla bean through the chinois, okay? So all we do here is, boom, you have homemade vanilla pudding. To make sure a skin doesn't form on the top, what I like to do is I like to put a piece of plastic over this. Now, if you're plastic sensitive, then please disregard. You can put something else over, but I think it's really important so that way it stays nice and creamy and you don't have to fold back in the chunks. But look at this, it looks super thick, but I promise you it's gonna th thin out really nice. So I'll show you what I mean right now. All we have to do is this number right here, press this in, boom. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the fridge so it can cool down and then we can start everything else. Let's go. Okay, so next we're gonna make, we have two things to make with the mixer. Now I highly suggest you use a mixer for this or a hand beater, but we need to make an Italian meringue and we're also gonna make whipped cream, okay? What's important here is try to make the whipped cream first, then make your Italian meringue, okay? And, or you could do vice versa, but I highly suggest make the whipped cream, get it in the fridge, that way it's out of the way, rinse out your bowl, then go into making your Italian meringue and we'll get it right into that. So without further ado, let's jump in. So you're gonna need about a pint of cream, vanilla bean. Okay, I like to listen, I like to use the real stuff, okay? I mean, listen, vanilla bean paste is great. Vanilla extract is great, but in all honesty, if you can get real vanilla bean, this is just a better option. You get the true flavor of vanilla, but Listen, there's some recipes that call for vanilla bean and I appreciate it. In all honesty, I spend a little extra money and get the vanilla bean. And the reason why is you get the pure flavor of vanilla. You don't get any other flavors, right? And you know, everybody can taste fake vanilla, but um, that's just my recommendation. Anyway, whipped cream. So we have cream, we have a little vanilla, and then also powdered sugar, that's the key. So I'm adding powdered sugar. I added about a quarter of a cup. And the reason why I'm using powdered sugar over granulated sugar is because powdered sugar has a percentage of cornstarch. So about 3% cornstarch. So if you look at the back of the ingredient list right here, okay, you will see cornstarch in the ingredients. And we want that, okay? That's gonna help stabilize our whipped cream. It's a little trade secret. Write it down, I'm telling you, it's so worth it. And the reason, the purpose for the whipped cream is, is to actually dip the vanilla wafers in while we're waiting <laughs> as a Scooby snack, but also we wanna lighten up the vanilla pudding. So what I like to do is add whipped cream to the vanilla pudding that we just made to make it super light and airy for our banana dessert. Okay, let's go ahead and start whipping.
All right, here we go, let's see this. Nice and stiff, you see that? And also, you see how it's not sliding off the spatula? That's when you know it's whipped up enough, okay? All right, we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna start our meringue. We're gonna make Italian meringue now. So, first things first, what I highly suggest is go get your sugar on the stove, okay? And you wanna get the sugar cooked and ready first, okay? Because during the time it cools down just ever so slightly, you can whip your egg whites and then start streaming in. So what I like to do is I like to have room temperature egg whites. This is five egg whites room temperature. Okay, very important that it's room temperature. They just whip up better. Once this is all set up, ready to go, plugged in, ready to go, then go over to the stove, start cooking your sugar. So now we're gonna make the Italian meringue. Now, I highly suggest you get a candy thermometer. That's what this guy is right here. This one, I'm not gonna lie, I got in culinary school, but I highly recommend, if you're gonna be cooking sugar, use one of these, okay? It tells you exactly what stage you need to be. So here we go. Going in with the sugar, that's 200 grams of sugar. You just want enough water to make sure it looks like wet sand, right? Or the texture of wet sand. You don't wanna to add too much water where you're making simple syrup. This is just so that the sugar melts evenly and there's no color. Okay, so we're gonna put that on all the way blast. And then I wait until it comes to a rolling boil to add the thermometer. From the time that you heat it up, it probably takes about three to four minutes to get to softball stage. That's what you're looking for, 240 degrees. Okay, and as you can see on here, this is the reason why I like this specific thermometer because you don't have to, it, you don't have to guess. It tells you softball, hardball, firmball, thread. So we wanna to get to right here, softball stage. So check this out, once it starts to come to a boil right now, that's when I wanna add the candy thermometer. And what's really important is make sure that the bottom actually touches, okay? Make sure no sugar is on the sides. And I'm just gonna drop this in and it's touching, so that's all that I care about. And you will notice it, it'll start to spike up. But once it gets to 220, then that stage from 220 to 240 is where it actually takes some time. So it's very important that you bring this to 220, all the way to 220. If not, then you'll just, it'll just deflate the egg whites and it'll be too watery. Okay, YouTube, I got a confession to make. I figured out later on in this video, you will see something was wrong with the meringue and I pinpointed the problem. So here I accidentally was thinking 220 in my head and I brought the sugar up to that temperature. Now, here's the thing, you wanna to get to 235 to 240 and that's where on the thermometer it says softball stage. For some reason I was thinking 220, but that is a fatal mistake in the restaurant business and I just wanna correct it on here and be honest. So I did not bring up the sugar to be hot enough. You really wanna to get to that 240 mark and you'll see I address it later in the video. And basically what we wanna do is you want to turn the heat off then set this aside, not on direct heat, leave the candy thermometer in for now, and this is when you wanna whip your egg whites. Okay, so now that our egg whites are, I'm sorry, our sugar is super hot. We can't add it straight to here, but that's the perfect timing to start whipping the egg whites. Okay, so just for Reference, I added a squeeze of lemon to bring up the pH in the egg whites. That way it's a little bit more stable. Now it does take a little bit longer to whip, but as you can see, they are stiff peaks. That's what we're looking for. Now you don't want to over whip because it will break them down. Now all we're going to do is add our sugar very gently and you'll see I'll do that right now. But our sugar is cool enough now where it's not, it's not boiling anymore and that's what you're looking for. Okay, so here we go. Slow. There we go, beautiful. Then look, before you do anything else, put water in this pot and then add your candy thermometer back in and boil it so that way the sugar comes off nice and easy. Always fill the pot back up with water, your sugar pot, then add your thermometer back in and that way you can boil the sugar and it doesn't stick to the pot you don't have to spend hours scrubbing. Okay, boom. This is beautiful, it's nice and stable, tastes great. We're gonna set that aside. So we have our vanilla pudding here. Look at how nice and beautiful and creamy that looks. See, it's so easy to make at your house. Do not buy it. Nothing wrong with the instant package. There is one thing that I don't like to make and that's the vanilla wafers. 
and we will get to that. But the Nilla wafers, I'm telling you, I, I've made I've made them plenty of times in the past, but I, I just feel like it's kind of like trying to make your own Oreos. It's really difficult. I buy the Nilla wafers and I'm not ashamed of it because it really makes a difference. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pudding here, we're gonna take our whipped cream, and then we're gonna add that straight in. Now, look, listen, you don't have to be too um, careful, right? This is ultimately turning into a filling. So I just like to get right in there. It's, it's nice and stable, so you're not gonna really um, do some damage, but I really like to just kind of mix the two. This, what this does is it makes it super rich and airy and creamy, and you'll see it just, the mouthfeel on this is amazing, I'm telling you, it's the way to go. And then look, super free, easy from there, look at this. Oh, tell me you don't wanna just eat this whole bowl. Now we are gonna build our banana pudding. So what you wanna do is you wanna start with the cream right in the bottom. And now listen, you don't have to be too, this is a nice home style one. If I was in a restaurant, I would put this in a mason jar or like a trifle mold or something really nice. But um, you know, here's the thing, you know, I, I cook a little bit differently at my house. So you'll notice when I switch gears from like cooking at home and uh, like a restaurant dish, it's quite different. Okay, so check this out, Nilla wafers. I do not make these fresh. I've made sugar cookies in the, in the past and I'm telling you, I, I will argue that this is the best way to go. This is the only thing I cheat on and because it actually makes a difference for me. It's kind of like trying to make your own Oreos. It just doesn't work out. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we are going to layer these down. Okay, I like to leave a little space because guess what? They expand just a little bit as they get soft, all right? And I think what's really important here is I do not pre-cut the banana, okay? It's, there's, there's no need to pre-cut the banana. Okay, so once I get that there, then I'll go grab my bananas. Look at that, super easy so far, right? We'll start with two. And what I like to do is, as soon as I open it up, I'll show you a little trick that I learned in the pastry world, okay? And I already took the peel off of one, but what I like to do is so I don't have to get a cutting board, I just leave this peel on. All I do is just slice. Okay, and now don't touch the table, okay? And for this recipe, it depends on how much bananas I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna start with two. And remember, you can always add, you can't subtract. Okay, layer these guys right in here. Oh, this is gonna be wonderful. I can see it now. And I also like to use really ripe banana too for uh, closer to the top. But hey, listen, you can do whatever you want. This is your pudding. All right, look at that, beautiful. Now we're just gonna layer this in. Oh, look at this. And now this is where, that once that first layer's down, this is where you go crazy. So what I like to do is just do this. I'm telling you right now, this is about to get so delicious. Look, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can also crunch these up too. You don't have to leave them whole cookies like I do. But I like to literally lay them in just like this, okay? Remember, we're cooking at home, right? This is, this is, at home, it doesn't have to be perfect. Layer these right in. Okay, then we take our other banana and use the whole banana too. But you see, some people cut their bananas in advance. I, you know, I try not to do that, you know, because they'll oxidize real quick and you can tell when a banana has been sitting out. But I mean, when you submerge it like this, it will take at least, it'll give you some time, two to three days to oxidize. If you cut it beforehand, it'll start oxidizing on you right away. Oh, look at this, my grandma would be proud. All right, I really like to fill it up here, okay? Because when we slam that meringue on, we want it to be almost overflowing. Oh yeah, this is nice. Now, this is my little trade secret. This is where I come in with the sweet banana, okay? So I use two times, okay? And then we're, what we're gonna do is we are going to layer one more time here. Look at this, oh. I'm telling you, this is, this is so fun to make. Like, obviously, I, I don't think I would serve this in a fine dining restaurant, but you know, this is delicious. This is something great to make for your kids. Amazing, okay, boom, remember the peel trick? Okay, so remember, this banana is a little bit more ripe, right? I want a soft, ripe banana for the top layer, uh, something that's aromatic. You know, like a, you know, when a, a super ripe banana has a different texture and it's way more fragrant. To, if you have one, it's good to add. If not, it's not a big deal. Just use regular, regular old banana. Now, in the real world, what I would do is put this in the fridge to let it set a little bit before I put the meringue on. But since we are at the house, I am just gonna go for it and tell me this doesn't look delicious. Now listen, I've had a chef before put cinnamon on the, at this part. Don't do it, yo. Please don't put cinnamon in here. I mean, you can if you want. If, you, if you're at your own house and this is, this is all you, 
then you can do what you want, but leave it just like this. All right, here we go. Muy importante. Not gonna lie, my meringue is not as beautiful as I, as I hoped, but it's still gonna work. So, you know, this is a good example. Like as a chef, I know this Italian meringue, the, you know, there's two things that could have went wrong. Too much egg to sugar ratio, or um, I over whipped the egg whites just a tad, or my sugar wasn't hot enough. There's a lot of things that could have went wrong, but if I was in a restaurant, I would have remade this real quick. But um, in all honesty, I'm at my house, and this is for my kids and wife, and so it's, you know, it's, trust me, they're gonna be just fine. And I think with the un untrained eye, they wouldn't, nobody would really know. So like, if you were making this for your family, it's totally fine. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna torch the top. A lot of people bake it, I'm not gonna do that. I just like to torch the top. Remember, this meringue is cooked and it's safe to eat because we heated up the sugar. So in turn, cooking the egg whites. All right, nice and easy. You want the flame to be nice and blue. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be so delicious, but look, I know you wanna eat it. You can serve it just like this, but what I highly recommend is at least put it in the fridge for, for three to four hours you know, before you serve it. Now, a lot of families serve it warm, but I highly suggest eating this at midnight, okay? Straight from the fridge with a spoon. It comes out really good, and I am my mouth is salivating, but anyway, so if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I told you this was gonna be a banger of a video. Easy dessert to make, you can make it. I'm telling you right now, it's an all year around dessert, a celebration, especially if you're, in the South, if you're in the South, you know this dessert. Now, I hope you take mine, make it with your family. You'll find the recipe below. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.